Welcome to your online coffee break, where we discuss bite-sized topics that inspire, educate, and entertain. Here's your host, a software innovator, award-winning marketer, and astronomy and space buff, Chuck Fields. Hello, thanks for joining me today for your online coffee break. Today, I'd like to introduce my special guest, Hannah Biardi. Hannah is a jazz, soul, crossover composer and musician. She first discovered her talent for piano and songwriting when she was just three years old. Hannah later studied jazz in college, releasing her first EP in 2018. Most recently, Hannah released her newest single, What Will Our Children Say? A rally cry for a better future. Imagine straightforward, reliable facts about any state or national politician on any issue of concern to you. VoteSmart.org. Hundreds of conservatives and liberals putting their differences aside and joining together to protect the most essential component of our democracy, a citizen's right to the truth about the people they elected or those seeking to replace them. All so that you can finally, simply, and instantly get the facts. VoteSmart.org. Because facts matter. Online Coffee Break. Thank you so much for joining me today. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Chuck. Appreciate it too. It is my honor. I love your music. I think it's incredible. But what I thought was really fascinating is you know how people are sort of born to something. And I was amazed that at just three years old, you started uh, discovering your musical gifts. I was wondering if you could share that story a little bit more. Sure, I'd love to. It's a story that I look back on very fondly, and I, I in a way, I, I feel like I've never grown past that, that little girl who was the first kind of curious soul who just sat down and started tinkering on the piano. Honestly, I feel like that same little girl every time I go to, I go to play, just because that's the spirit I'm channeling. I feel like I'm getting in touch with myself again. So, yeah. But it started out it just um, at three, I was just begging my parents for a piano, um, and they thought it probably was some passing hobby, as it usually is with kids those ages, <laughs> and uh, it stuck. Um, as soon as I sat down to play, um, I pretty much never left. I figured out, you know, I like composing. I like the sounds of harmonies and how notes sound. And I want to, you know, write my music. And then I started when I was seven, you know, listening to some jazz transcriptions and getting lessons at that point and learning things by ear, which seemed to just come really naturally to me. I was one of these people who really struggled to sight read and never even to this day, I'm not a great reader, but I'm kind of someone who hey, hum that for me, and I'll kind of figure it out or put my own spin on it. So that's kind of been how I started. See, I think that's amazing, too, because, again, I, I think I was like that when I was early because I, I started playing piano, too, when I was younger, but it was one of those where I could hear a tune and play it. But reading music, not so much, so I can totally relate that. <laughs> I still think it's amazing, too, because at three years old, I certainly wasn't thinking about playing piano. You know, I had my little toys around there and stuff. So I think that's kind of a cool thing for three. You're like, I want, I want a piano. <laughs> and it's neat to have your parents encourage you for that. I think that's wonderful. It's made all and, the difference having their support. It really has. So. Yeah. Now, what, what drew you into jazz? Do you have any specific instances or inspirations that drew you into that area? Um, I think it really started with um, the professor who I was studying with at the time, Brian de Blasio at University of Michigan Flint. He's who I studied with through most of my, um, you know, time growing up, studied jazz. And he started out by saying, hey, um, I think you'd be a really good fit for jazz. Check out like these 10 to 12 albums. And I just went to like a, a Borders or something in Barnes and Noble and just started listening to like Errol Garner and Oscar Peterson and these great pianists and really like the sound of Oscar. And I um, went back to him and he's like, okay, let's work on kind of a month or like a three to four month long project where we do a transcription by ear of like Lady Be Good, for instance, is one of the first pieces I've learned. And it was quite the undertaking, but um, no music was involved and it was completely by ear. So of course I, I, I forgot it if I didn't practice it. <laughs> <laughs> it at least was a way for me to kind of foray into the jazz world and realize, hey, I really love improvisation and hey, I really like this innovation that's at the heart of this, you know, idiom. I, I guess my question on this is your jazz is unique and that, you know, it's, it's not, you sort of combine, I, I don't want to say genres or whatever like that, but how would you describe what drew you into creating jazz, sort of giving it your own flair? Yeah, that's a really good question. I'm glad you asked that because so often I feel like jazz just saying the word jazz, it's so personal and everybody kind of has their own relation to jazz. There's, you know, progressive jazz, contemporary jazz, more traditional. So 
Um, I'm glad you asked that because I'm trying to create kind of my own niche within the jazz world, which is exactly my own sound. So it's an infusion of kind of R&B, soul, new age, and kind of a contemporary jazz sound that I like to think is my own. And I'm kind of hearing that now with artists like Candace Springs and Lindsay Webster, which are two artists I kind of strongly identify my sound with. Um, and they kind of have a way of um, blending a lot of genres and kind of creating a new future for jazz, I think. That's wonderful. Now, I do want to get into your, your latest song. It's called What Will Our Children Say? Beautiful song. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and the meaning behind it? Sure. So um, just with kind of the time we're in now, I wrote that song about a year ago. So pre-COVID, you know, pre a lot of the things are going on, but I wanted to just make a statement um, about um, just, I was thinking ahead to what, what our future would like look like for children. Um, yeah. I hope to become a mom one day. I'm thinking of other um, children, you know, generations even ahead. Um, what kind of world are we going to be leaving, leaving them in in terms of the environment, maybe sociopolitically, economically? Um, what kind of place will it be? You know, will there even be air to breathe? <laughs> we don't know. Yeah. So I wanted to create kind of a song that acknowledged that angst and that uncertainty, but in a very, like, curious way. So the lyrics are more, you know, you know, what will our children say? What did they take away? Um, and what will they give us back with our very lives under attack? That's the chorus. And the, the person I really had in mind that fueled the song was Greta Thunberg. I think just yeah. seeing activists like her, you know, really inspired me to write something kind of as homage to that generation. So that's wonderful. And how's that song going so far? How's it being received? <laughs> Um, it's being received well on the whole so far and um, I think I have a you know a, a, someone is writing an article about it and there's a video actually that accompanies the song yep. so that will be debuting pretty soon here in the next week or so oh that's wonderful now let's let's go back a little bit because you have so much amazing music and I love it I also love your your first EP that you came out with called the quietest place that came a couple years ago can you yeah. tell us more about that because I, I guess I kind of want to know like how long that was your first EP so like how long did it take and were there any surprises like oh this is what recording in the studio is like compared to what you expected so tell us more about that sure that was quite a learning curve quite a process so I um recorded that produced it um myself from the University of Michigan they have a audio studio that's wonderful that I was took advantage of as a as a college student and it was essentially free or included in my education at least um so i was glad to have been able to produce that while i was a student take advantage of working with um some audio engineers that were studying it at the time and um that kind of was a culmination of my college experience kind of a coming of age album like all right this is my first stepping out as you will into the into yeah. the recording scene and um kind of the lyrics and melodies were a lot about love and light and um kind of themes of unity, like illuminate, getting in touch with your, your inner self. And um, that has seen through many of my later music to those themes. But um, just a chance for me to uh, learn, like you said, learn about the recording process and get used to being in a studio and realize, yes, that things do take a lot of time. And, uh, you know, a whole couple years it took just to have that album ready. But it felt really empowering to know that everyone involved was like a friend of mine who did the cover art or, or someone at the same level as me. We're all around the same age. So it felt very empowering. There was like a U of M production all in all. See, that's wonderful. And obviously it was successful because you've spurned so many new songs since then. And one of them, I have to admit, probably, well, you have so many songs that I love, but one of my favorites is Distant Land. like to share my music with family and friends are like you write really like relaxing music and stuff like try to write something more upbeat I got told like something with that with a beat catchy and I'm like hey why not you know I, that's the stuff that gets our toes tapping right so 
kind of I started with the beat and wanted to write a song kind of in the vein of Sade, kind of inspired by her music. So came up with this idea to kind of let's uh, just kind of groove away to a distant land. And it started off kind of slower, but I worked with some friends of mine who are into production and kind of got the beat to, to par and added a little bit of conga and some reverb. And I think it got a really nice spacey sound. So that was kind of the inspiration. It was like a textural inspiration before I came up with the song. I kind of envisioned how I wanted people to feel kind of before I wrote the song. See, I love that too. And I also want to go into a, a song even newer than that one is Who Can Relate? And I even love the video for this one. Can you tell us a little bit more about that song and the meaning behind that one? Yeah, so Who Can Relate came out first and that was a oh, kind of... Okay debut yeah it was my debut kind of uh single and video i've always wanted to get into film and making kind of collaborating with um people in the film world and make a music video on essentially no budget so as like someone graduating just out of college very little savings so i worked with some friends who were willing to you know gain some experience and by working with me and um got to work with some local actors and even friends and throw them in as extras in the video and um, our DP made a cameo. It was just fun. But I think the message of Who Can Relate was about really in these challenging times in the world we're living in, a lot of flux, a lot of change on many levels. In what ways, in what capacities can we still recognize the humanity in each other and feel compassion towards each other and connect? Which I think are kind of futuristic themes, but we're seeing them more now and they're helping us get through these times. So um, that was kind of the thinking behind it. And that, always, and that theme again came through, never frustrate your future born ally, which is a lyric of remembering the, the future and kind of who we're about to become and to always think, be thinking ahead, I think. I love that. I love how you put your passion uh, of what you're feeling, what you're experiencing in your music. And this is kind of a silly question because I am not a composer. I'm not a songwriter. But I always wondered, as you're coming up with a song, and I know they're probably all different, what comes first? Is it the lyrics? Is it the melody? Does it depend? What comes first? How do you do that? Yeah, that's um, it's something you don't think about in the moment. But actually, looking back, it seems to me I'm someone who's really starting out right as a pianist, really drawn to harmony and and um, texture. So so kind of I take a chordal approach. I, if I really find like a chord I like or a sequence of a chord I like. Um, I think the song starts to write itself. I think then the melody will happen and then a lot of times the lyrics will come next. Another interesting way it comes out for me is all at once kind of as a stream of consciousness and I'll have my voice memo going on. I'm like, okay, I think this might be something. So I'll like turn on my phone, get my voice memo queued up and it will just kind of all come out. Lyrics, maybe sometimes nonsensical, melody and harmony. And then I kind of have to go back and teach it to myself and say, all right, which of that, you know, what in the lyrics is savable? What can we work with and develop? And then, okay, this sequence here and kind of have to teach myself what I just song because it starts out making no sense and you kind of have to make it. <laughs> I think it's a, I, I just I love that process because obviously you come up with these amazing results on this and it's kind of a, a, a weird question but you know speaking of you said you hope to become a parent someday and I was just wondering you know there are parents out there listening and maybe they have some really young kids that say hey I want a piano for my third birthday or whatever what advice would you give for these parents just to encourage their kids in the music yeah world? I think um, not to maybe judge too soon if it's going to be a hobby or a career or, or both. <laughs> I right. mean, I think to give a child a, a, a chance to really um, find themselves and gravitate to something and identify with an instrument. Maybe even to go through a phase where they're picking up a lot of different instruments. I think that's okay. And my dad, you know, didn't start out by getting giving me a Basta, obviously. He started out, he got a piano relatively inexpensive and just set it up so that I had a piano. It didn't matter what it was. It was just something that I can experiment with. And then really paying attention to your child's interests as they grow, I think. And if you see some passion developing, then be able to nurture that and be able to support them with lessons and words of encouragement and things. I think that really makes a difference because so many times great artists, unfortunately, just either don't receive that, that nurturing or that support and it ends up coming out, I feel like, in their music or in their personality later. That's why I feel like so different because I was one of these people who received so much and to this day love and support for my craft. And I don't think any of this would have been possible without my parents' support. 
See, so, I think it's wonderful. I want to thank your parents too, because again, they encourage you and then you write this awesome music that encourages others. So it, it's kind of neat to, to pass it along. I think that's wonderful. Now, I do understand moving forward that you're actually have a new EP that's coming out. Can you tell us more about what's coming up for you? Sure. So this is a kind of a debut of kind of a new, where I want to be. This is like the new Hannah. This is the new album is going to be called Straight from the Soul. And it's kind of a combination of both original pieces um, that are inspired again from myriad of my favorite artists, anywhere from Stevie Wonder to Sade, from um, Dinah Krall, kind of a mix. And then the other half will be music from um, artists such as, um, you know, Michelle Legrand. So like Windmills of Your Mind, some more film pieces, but with my own twist and actually one from Alda Barge and Carol Bear Sager. So kind of, kind of a throwback. <laughs> I like music from like the 70s and 80s, but kind of twisting them and making my own. So it's hopefully will be a, another kind of direction for me. And I'm really excited about it. Wonderful. Any idea when that's going to come out approximately, or is it still in progress? It's still in progress, but it's about 70 to 80% recorded and mixed. Um, so probably um, just with what's been going on, I think towards the end of this year, beginning of next year. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, Hannah, again, we're so excited about new music. We're loving your current music. Again, your latest single is What Will Our Children Say? I just want to wish you the best of luck. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Chuck. It's been fun. Online Coffee Break. Wow, I really enjoyed my conversation with Hannah today, and I'm loving her music. If you'd like to learn more, just go to her website at hannahbyarty.com. That's H-A-N-N-A-H-B-A-I-A-R-D-I.com. I want to thank Hannah for joining me today. also want to thank you for joining us as well. Again, we'd appreciate it if you'd share this episode with a friend. Or if you're listening on a uh, podcast application, if you can give us a five-star rating, we would love that. Or if you're watching on YouTube, if you can give us a thumbs up, we'd appreciate that as well. Again, thanks so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time. God bless.